Isaiah 45, verse 19. For thus says the Lord, let's read it together. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. Verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth, I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things. Father, let your word give us direction, illumination, understanding. Powerful words that you've spoken here, Father. May they change lives because your word is changing lives every day, every minute. I thank you for this assembly of saints. May there be a blessing today from what we hear from you. I subject and submit myself to you wholly in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell them sit on your enemies. All right. I want to give you a few, a few snippets that I believe will help you in the area of prayer. And in this scripture we just read in Isaiah 45 verse 19, God says, I have not spoken in secret. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. The word he has released for us is not a dark word on the earth. Let me remove something here. Can you read that scripture again, verse 19? Let's read verse 19 together. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, God does not need to speak in secret. When God speaks, his word is declared, even in public, because he's not ashamed of his word. What he says he will do, he will do. I want to believe when we pray, we must understand the basis upon which we are praying. We must understand the basis upon which God is speaking these words. When we pray, I've been praying for this church. I've been praying for you. We're getting there. We've scratched the surface. This next phase, we really begin this work. Now is when we are starting. Everything we've been doing before was preparation. But now we begin. We begin as we see people graduating Gideon's army are being taught. Discipling is happening. Kingdom champions are being raised. But you're not being raised to become a congregant. You're being raised to go. You're being raised to become the salt and the light of the earth. That is why you're called a kingdom champion, not a title and a badge to be put on your jacket. It is actually a function. You become a kingdom champion to be effective. That's why sometimes I say to you, celebrate those who are doing something here because we are a family. Very seldom will your children stand to sing on a stage and you sneer at them. When your children come on stage, you want to have the best for them. You want to see that they are seeing you celebrating them. Uh, sometimes people who stand here are afraid, are scared. You have to encourage them. So you must become an encourager. That's part of being a kingdom champion. You must learn to cheer people on. I thank God that he's using you. You see, you need to learn to say that because I found out in Africa, or particularly in Kenya, we're quite stingy with our encouragements. We need to learn to open our mouths and tell people, I like what God is doing in your life. I like the way God is taking you. I see your future is brighter than your present. Amen. Come on, encourage your neighbor next to you. Tell them, neighbor, I see something before the end of this year. No, don't use my words. Use your words. Use your words. I see something. I see something in this house. I see something in this church. Because God is not a liar. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. He will do what he says he will do. Now, now God says in his word that I don't speak in vain. 45, 19, please. I don't speak in vain. Ooh, I don't speak in vain. 
When God says he will do something, trust me, he will do it. When God says I will perform my work, he will perform it. When God says I will finish a thing, he will finish it. He does not speak in vain. Could you put that scripture up? I want us to see word for word. God does not speak in vain. He says, I have not spoken in secret. This means that when his word over your life comes to pass, it will not be in secret. When God publishes you <laughs> like a book, it's open for the world to see. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But at the end of it all, God shall be glorified. Glory be to God. He says, in a dark place of the earth, I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. Now, when I talk about prayer, this is part of where I want to begin. He did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I want to tell you, none of us pray in vain. You cannot call on God and he doesn't respond. So why is it that we don't see a response? Have we truly called on God with understanding? Have we called on God with understanding? I want to believe that God is getting us to raise up people whose, an whose prayers shall be answered. Can you imagine how it would be if the thousands of you here would be able to receive answered prayer every day? This room will not be able to contain us. Ooh, can you believe how it would be when you discover the secret of entering the secret place where every prayer is answered because you've discovered the secret of answered prayer? Can you imagine a situation where as a believer you win every case? I believe there's a place when you discover the secrets of how to operate under open heaven and operate under what daddy preached for us here, you will enter a place where you will see results. I desire to see results over your life and over my life in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 89 verse 14, righteousness and justice and judgment are the habitation of your throne. They're the habitation of your throne. Justice. When you talk about justice, it means that there's a judge. When you talk about justice, it means that there is a courtroom. The, the constitution of God has to do with his word. Therefore, he watches over his word. I want you to write that down. He watches over his word because he's a respecter of his word. Can you put Isaiah, uh, Psalm 89 verse 14 up, please? And please throw the scriptures I quote up there so that we can move. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Ooh. They are the foundation of your throne. God's throne is founded on being right. God's throne is founded on justice. That is why Jesus in Matthew 23, 23 said <laughs> that you, 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 you have ignored the weightier matters. What weightier matters? Justice and mercy. Why? They are the foundation of his throne, not tithing. The foundation of his throne has to do with people being able to get his justice. When Jesus said, thy kingdom come, when he says your kingdom come, it describes a way that God does things. The order of God come on earth. The justice of God come on earth. The mercy of God come on earth. The righteousness of God come on earth. The way it is in heaven. Glory be to God. So I want to show you a few things and hope that we can be able to learn a few things. So, so I want you to know that God is a respecter of his word. So when you pray, you must understand this truth. That number one, justice and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Number two, he's a respecter of his word. Man may not respect his word. A man will tell you I'll come at 2 and show up at 2.45, but not God. When God says I'm coming, he will come. And if he says it is 2, it will not be 159, it will not be 201. He's a respecter of his word. He watches over his word. Psalm 89, 34. God watches over his word and will not lie. Makashatadasi. So what does that mean? It means that the word of God commits him. When he speaks it, it commits him. He's committed by his word. 
So when you pray, you must learn to pray his word. Amen. Because it is not your words that will commit him. It is his word. Glory be to God. It is not your words and your emotions that will commit God. It is his word. <laughs> Psalm 89, 34, please. God watches over his word to perform it. My covenant I will not break. Nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. 35. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. I want you to write this down. God is not a liar. When God gives his word, <laughs> he will perform that word according to what he said. Aish! He's not a liar. I am so encouraged. When he says, I will heal all your diseases, he is a God of his word. He is a father that keeps his word. He will not lie. He watches over his word. So you must believe when you pray that the father you are praying to is not a liar. When you get on your knees, you must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. What is repenting? Repenting, there is a word changing your mind. God is not like a man who says, come, I will, I will marry you. And then tomorrow he says, oh, I've changed my mind. That's not our God. Our God will do what he said he's going to do. He will deliver what he said he's going to deliver on time. Let me tell you something this service. I am so encouraged to understand that we are entering a dimension of prayer where we can understand that as long as we are praying in his word, he will do what he said he's going to do. I'll say it over your family. Pray his word. I'll say it over your business. Pray his word. I'll say it over your situation. Pray his word. You will see that he will do what he was supposed to do. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18, in these two immutable truths, in that it is impossible for God to lie. Impossible. These two immutable things. It is impossible. Let me tell you. It is impossible means it cannot happen. <laughs> oh, Father, thank you that everything you've promised me before the end of this year, it shall be so. My Bible tells me that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I have a question for your neighbor. When did your prayer last avail anything? What is the problem with your prayer? Why are you not availing anything? Yet God is not a liar. He says my prayer, if it is effective, fervent, it shall avail much. If you are in a class and you are scoring marks, you are either getting, did you ever receive your paper from your teacher? Give me a paper, daughter. Have you ever, oh, thank you, son. Did you ever receive marks from your teacher? And he came to your desk and he said, Rogo, It is as though, it is as though he is so ashamed, he just says, he doesn't even look at you, he says, Rogo, yeah, see me. <laughs> Have you ever gone through that in a class? You know why? Your marks are bad. When you are praying, what are your marks? What is your percentage of avail? My God, I'm believing God to study his word so that my prayer can avail much because I believe we are not being called to be a religious cultist Sunday attending kingdom army. We have been called to be the salt and the light of the earth. Not tormented every day by fornicative thoughts, pornography thinking, no. We have been called to be the salt and the light of the earth. That means your prayer should be getting results. You are resolving getting your knees before God should show something on the earth. Oh my God. God will do what he said he's going to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Your prayers shall avail much. Your prayers shall avail much. Amen. Can you go back to Numbers 28? Verse 18, 23 verse 18. It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Nor is he the son of man 
that he should repent. Are you, are you there? Numbers 23, 18 to 19. He's not a man. Verse 19. 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man. Has he said? You see, it doesn't matter what others say. What matters is what God has said. Can I repeat that? Yes. What matters is what God has said, not what others have said. He has said, he has said and he will not, well, has he not said and will he not do? I heard that a witch doctor said, it doesn't matter. I heard that a doctor said, I respect science, but it doesn't matter. I heard what the results were. I thank God for the results, but it doesn't matter. What matters in your life? What matters in your life, what matters in your situation, is what God says. They that come to him must believe that he is a rewarder. But there's a place you have to reach in life, where you have to shut out the voices that everybody else is putting in your life. And you put on the voice of what God said. I need you to ask your two neighbors a question right now. What has God said about your life? I don't care what a witch doctor has released. You see, you see, oh, Maka Shatabala. God is a respecter of his word. What men will use against you are words. But can I tell you, you have a word that is bigger than other words. You have a word that is bigger than a situation. You have a word that is bigger than a report. When you go into prayer, don't go to God with emotions. Go to God with his word. When you go to God with his word, he will respect, not your emotions, he will respect his word because he watches over his makashata. He watches over his word to perform. I wish I had two radical individuals here that would say, I know before this year is over, I will see some answers to my prayer. He's watching over his word. I want to enter a place of prayer where no prayer is unanswered because I will not pray according to my mind. I will pray in accordance with his word. You need to have a revelation when you go into prayer because revelation will tell you what God is saying and then you will be able to say what God is saying in your revelation. Glory be to God. You need to have a revelation. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11. Can you go to verse 9? Let's start there. Let me show you what God is saying. No, just go to verse 11. We'll go to verse 9 later, sorry. In verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me. You need to position yourself in a place where the word comes. Some of us are talking too much. Words are not coming. You need to enter a place where the word of the Lord will come to you. And let me tell you, when you have revelation, when the word comes from God, there is speed. Oh, amen. When the word comes from God, there is speed for the word to perform. Did you know God is in a hurry to perform his word? Uh, did you know that? He is not in a hurry to perform your word. He's in a hurry to perform his work regarding your life. Go back, go back there. Go back there. See this. Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. I pray that your eyes will be open to see right. Elisha is praying for Gehazi. Father, open his eyes. Physically, the man could see. But spiritually, he was blind as a bat. I'm praying your spiritual eyes can start to open. That you may have information before others get it. May God open your eyes this morning. Hey, I pray for faith in this house. May God open your eyes this morning. Now watch this. Watch what the Bible says. It says, in, 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 continue there. So moreover, the Lord can say, Jeremiah, what do you see? You need to see right. Because when you see right, there'll be a confirmation from heaven. And in verse 12, the Bible says that God said to him, you have seen right. You have seen well. For I am ready to perform my word. When you see right, God can perform his word. <laughs> and in verse 13, he says, And the word of the Lord came to me a second time, 
and said, what do you see? I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. Go to verse 14. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north, calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. When you can see, you can see what will happen in a place before others see. Now let me show you where I'm going with this. He says, I'm in a hurry to perform. Can you, can you go back to verse 12? I'm looking for a particular interpretation. Can you give me KJV, please? Because these ones have changed something that I had not seen. It says, thou hast seen well. Yes, I will hasten. When you see well, there is speed for delivery. I want to believe that some of you have come with some urgent things that are required before this service is over. They are not here. I want to believe, I'm not trying to excite you, I'm trying to educate you, that God is not confined by time. But when you see, he's in a hurry to perform his word. May he perform his word for your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Go to Hosea chapter 14. So you need to know God is not a liar. God watches over his word to perform it. You need to see properly. And then in Hosea chapter 14 verse 2, Bible says, take with you words. When you go to God, don't take emotions. My God. If you want to see results, stop taking emotions to God. God does not answer to emotions. I have been in prayer sometimes and I see people coming with folded face. <laughs> Father! Father! Let me tell you, you can fold your face all you want. The Bible doesn't tell me to take for him what looks like anointing. No. He says, take, put that back up there. Take words with you and return to the Lord <laughs> and say, Take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously. For we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. I have learned. Most of us don't know how to go to God with the right words. He's, the Bible says, take words with you. You know, most of you know how to go to a witch doctor. It's funny that all the tools you need for the witch, you'll take. If the witch says, come with seven heads of white chicken you will not miss a step. You will find seven heads of white chicken. Come with 16 nails. You will go find nails. They should be four inches wide, two meters long. You don't even know where they are bought, but you will go find them. Because you believe that the witch will do something that will cause something to come to pass. What they will release on you are rituals and words. But let me tell you, when you go before our father, he is not a man that he should lie. So if there is anybody on earth who has said something about your life on the realm of earth that is causing you not to be able to progress, I'm countering what they have said with another word. The word I'm releasing over your life today, let me tell you something. God said to me, go back to Kenya. Raise kingdom champions. I didn't come to raise chicken. I didn't come to raise goats. I came to raise kingdom champions. We are going to do things that have never been seen before. And let me tell you, I counter every word that has been spoken over your life to keep you down in a place you shouldn't be. And I release words of victory, words of grace, words of supernatural interference coming over your life right now. I'm thanking God I came back. I came back so that some of you can open your eyes and see. It took Elisha to open his mouth and release a prayer to heaven and say, God, open his eyes. Father, today in Kenya, open their eyes that they may see. Oh, God, I'm feeling bad. God doesn't know what feeling bad is. You know, angels don't have feelings. In heaven, God doesn't deal with feelings. He's touched by the feelings, but he's not moved by them. What will move God are your words. And today I'm praying that people can enter a prayer dimension. God, do this, do 
this thing. What they have believed for, let them see. Let them see. Open their eyes that they can see that the end of a thing is better than the beginning. Open their eyes that they can see that all things work together for good. Open their eyes that they can see that they will not give up because of this matter. Open their eyes that they can see that, Father, you will do a performing work because we are releasing words to you today. Open the portals of heaven. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let the rain come down. Let this church see your glory. Let this church see your manifestation. It shall be so. Let me tell you, I have a conviction this morning. It shall be so. It shall be so. Amen means it shall be so and not otherwise. It shall be so. It shall be so with your family. It shall be so with your business.